Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 44, and today uh, we have a special treat in store for all of our polyglots who are interested in learning German or English speakers who know a little bit of German as well. Today we will be discussing false friends or false cognates of German and English, and there are plenty of good ones, so we are very excited to bring these to you today. We hope you all learn some good new cognates, or I guess false cognates, in German to help you out next time you're in Germany, Austria, or Switzerland. Without further ado, I'm here with the man with the plan, my buddy Jared. What's going on, Jared? Hello, Chad. I'm going to give you an early shout out for not using some sort of gift pun. I'll, you, I thought about it. <laughs> you, you Google, you Google false co cognate in German, and it's just like. Gift is not your friend. Don't, uh, don't blah blah blah. Gift. Granted, I really want the title to be um, German false cognates. Don't open that gift. <laughs> I think it's a good. I think it's a good title. I, I congratulate you for not using that pun, and then I'm going to use it in the title. There we go. The title you has to be I'm catchy. Though, puns, you know, people though. have to, it has to be. Uh, oh, for sure. You can't have. You can't have a, a beautiful intro like that. That that would. I don't know if they have that much space in the uh, character <laughs> section. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And I'm not sure if uh, our listeners who uh, don't speak German would also get the pun. They might be like, what are they even talking about? That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, first, please, everyone, follow us on Twitter, Untranslatable1. That's where I put clips, pictures, uh, things that uh, I rarely actually say things, but I do now retweet and like more things that seem interesting. Um, I'm starting to spend more time on, on like, our... So our podcast social media than than my own, which is probably a good thing. I think maybe I don't know. I I do the same with Instagram actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, speaking of Instagram, follow us on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast, or you can email us, uh, Untranslatable Podcast at gmail gmail dot com. Tell us some of your fa uh, favorites, false cognates, false friends of any language that you like. Maybe, I mean, not maybe, we can definitely and most likely will do more episodes than this sometime in the future on ver with various other languages and their false cognates because there are, there are a lot of them. People just steal from each other all the time. <laughs> that's true, especially English. English is notorious oh, that's for true. taking words from other languages. Yeah, we, yeah um, America, yeah, that's what we're known for is just uh, taking bits and our favorite bits and pieces from all over the world and making them our own. <laughs> right, very true. <clears throat> Um, so before we even begin, I, this is, I, I, this has been on my mind for days. So, um, after our, um, previous recording, you were jetting off to a, um, a Komotov Pirati game, I, I, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And we know that, um, <laughs> at this point, it's the, uh, it's, it's the Chad curse. They cannot win with you there. So how is, how is your, uh, how is your game? I don't know the answer to this. I'm we won 5-0. Okay. All right. It was a, it was a great game. Um, the friend that I went with, he said he, he could feel it. He felt the win. <laughs> and he actually hasn't said that oh in other games. So I was like, all I'll right, well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I told him, well, I'm bringing my good luck scarf with me. And uh, I had to, had to twirl it around five times <laughs> because we got five goals. But I can tell you. One of the main reasons why Pirati has been doing better, and it's because they signed a Canadian goalie a few weeks ago, mm. and he's rock solid. Okay. Do you know what his name is? He played Shout in the uh, Justin Fleming. Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry, Justin Peters. Okay. Brett Fleming is the other Canadian on the Oh, team. the one. Brett Fleming's right. the defenseman, and uh, Justin Peters is the uh, the goalkeeper. And what was really funny was, you know, just like in – uh, kind of like a similar atmosphere in a soccer stadium where you have all the fans cheering, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the game, they were going, Justin Peters. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Peters. So that oh was good. Gosh. Um, who were they playing against? They were p playing uh, Sparta Praha or Sparta Prague, which they were number two in the league when they played. Wow. Yeah, I I'd imagine. I mean, I, this is just a guess, but you'd imagine that the the biggest city in the in the country probably has one of the better teams. But I think there. I think uh, Prague's coach was German. His name was Uva. Yeah, that sounds pretty German. Could have been Austrian, so was, maybe. Who knows? Swiss. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> or he could be Czech with just German ancestry too. I don't know. But 
It was a really good game. Uh, I think four out of the five goals actually came on a power play. And there were a couple of power plays against Pirati as well. And they've, I think, one, the goalie has been solid. And also Brett Fleming, the other Canadian, he was injured, and now he's been back a few games. It seems like he's been going, you know, get, getting back into the swing of things and playing really well. And so they haven't been scoring or getting scored on as much with power plays. So maybe that's a reason why. So shout out to them. I'm boring Jared with my <laughs> hockey talk, so we can it's change not the that subject. I'm, you're boring me. I'm just uh, you're. I I, I just. Uh, I, I'm more just like wow, Chad's into this. I love it. <laughs> My face when didn't in, look when like. When did Komutov do as the uh, Komutov people do? I guess. <laughs> I, I I would love to see uh, a video of you twirling that uh, that Komutov uh, that Komutov uh, scarf in the air. Were right. you Were you cheering along, uh, Justin Peters? Justin Peters. <laughs> of course I was. <laughs> you better believe it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it was a good time though, and I met up with a uh, with a German guy who I. One of the first games of the season I was there, I overheard him speaking German um, and uh, started just kind of talking to him. You, you know how outgoing I can be sometimes. I also had a couple beers beforehand, you know, mm -hmm. a little, little, little Pirati pregame. But uh, <laughs> he was actually at this game as well, so I got to talk to him for a bit. That sounds like something, by the way, really nice Pirati pregame sounds like what they actually call it. Time for Pirati pregame. And then, like, a bunch That's of a good idea. in the air. I'll have to I'll have to talk and to you, their PR. Do they have like a uh, some sort? Of, anyway, keep going. <laughs> Sorry. No, that was it. It was just nice oh, okay. to see and talk to him again, practice my German. So, um, you just like said, um, how did you strike up a conversation with them? Uh, I just like usual. I heard him speaking German. Hey, I also speak and, German. Uh, well, Move I, said, I, asked him, <laughs> I asked him where he was from. Uh, okay, and that's just how it started. Okay. All right. I, I, a little part of the, sometimes when I ask those questions, it's for my own personal. I'm like, all right, let me keep that in mind. Right. Where are you from? That's a really easy way to do it, though, <laughs> is, is if you hear somebody speaking a, a foreign language and you also speak that foreign language. Right. Just ask them, where are you from? Yeah. Um, by the way, do you have what, what um, iPhone do you have? Do you use a dongle or do you still have a headphone jack? I, I still got a headphone jack. Oh I'm old God. school. Dude, I go through these fucking... I go through... Uh, sorry, part of my French. I go through these goddamn dongles. <laughs> <laughs> like they're bags of frosted animal crackers. Like these things... <laughs> I, break, I break these things all the time. I can't like... So you have what? Like an 8 or a 7? I have an 8 or plus. Nine? You know, not to brag. Eight plus, but okay. my mom got to buy one, get one free deal a couple months ago. So There you go. <laughs> nice. Um... But, uh, no, like, I go through these dongles so much, and, I, and like, right now the one I have is on its last leg, and I'm scared to touch it because I, I was walking th in, through Philly yesterday, and it just started crackling in my headphones, and I was like, great, uh -oh. this one's on its way out. And so I think if you're you – going to get yourself a good pair of Bluetooth headphones, my man. Yeah, but for the uh, – yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and just keep these for, for the – yeah, I guess so. Because now this dongle has to be my permanent podcast dongle, and I have to take – very good care of it. And the thing is, buying them on Amazon, I, I bought some on Amazon uh, a couple months ago that didn't work at all. And it was a two-pack, and it didn't work at all. Really? Did you send them back? I didn't bother because they were like $6. <laughs> okay. And um, and they're like, send them back. And then well, and I was like, ah, and I just never did. I've sent back stuff that's of actual, like $6 was on a, on like the my laziness part. I was like, ah, fuck. Like, what? Like, I thought right. I was going to do it, and then I just never did, and I was like, whatever. But I definitely would if it was more than $6. But um, I'm actually I'm actually a little bummed with Amazon, by the way. What's that? Um, because, Shout them so, out. I, I'm, I'm going style. to. I'm going I'm to call them out is what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, I, as you know, I like to read. I didn't want to bring a bunch of books with me. So, what's the logical answer to solve this question is bring a Kindle with you or an e-reader, mm -hmm. right? I download all these books. I had over a hundred books on my Kindle, and then uh, one night I was trying to read, and I went to go like go back to the main menu, and the screen literally like went black, white, black, white, and it just shut down. So I was like, okay, that's weird. So I tried to turn it back on, and now it is still stuck on the Kindle opening screen. I've tried restarting it, <laughs> um, how charging long have you had fully. It? 
like a year and a half. Okay. Maximum two years. So not that long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have an iPod from, I think, my senior year of high school, and that sucker still works. Yeah, my iPod so. still worked until someone stole it out of my vehicle. <laughs> It probably still works. Not, not well, to make you feel luckily, worse. Luckily, I mean, the good news is only the music works. So, like, they got some good music, but, like, if you open any sort of other app, and by app I mean, like, calculator, it'll just immediately crash and close. <laughs> oh, nice. And it's okay. just, just music works. And I was like, I, that's fine. I don't, need, I don't need apps on my iPod. I have an iPhone 8 Plus that my mom got me with her buy one, get one free deal. There you go. <laughs> Shout out for sure. <clears throat> yeah, that's the one thing I also messed up with is – I uh, I didn't bring a dongle for my laptop. Thankfully, all my classrooms that I teach in have computers, uh, but there's one classroom where the computer is super slow. So on my Tuesday morning classes, I have to plan ahead and basically go PowerPointless and computerless. Oh. Um, if I just had a dongle, I could just hook up my laptop right. to it. But I didn't bring one. I have one in the States. I might have my parents bring it with me when they come visit for Christmas. But... Um, I was looking at the, the like regulations for what you're allowed to send people in the Czech Republic, and you're not allowed to send computer equipment. What, do you consider those dongles a computer equipment? I mean, they are, I I'm, guess. It's, hold hold it up. To let, a me, let, me, let me look this up again. But I, um, I, would, I, would, I would let that one fly and just uh, say it's something else, because it's not like you're sending a hard drive or like um, – right. Like, I mean, there's there's not even any sort of electrical current flowing through that thing. Like, it's okay. So, so here we go. These are the uh, prohibited. Nope, that's not it. One second there. That's like <laughs> a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, let's. See By the here. way, um, while you're looking at that, um, so you uh, saw uh, Kumatov, uh, Parati Kumatov, mm-hmm. rise to victory. I did. Mm-hmm. I mentioned that my um, my friend Brad, uh, his flight got canceled, and I um, and um, do you do you have the same guilty pleasure of like when plans get canceled and you're like oh, like like that freedom feeling. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, one I I, w- I I I like especially since I didn't really want to be a tour guide. Not that I didn't really want to be a tour guide, but I didn't really – I don't know how to be – Brad hasn't been to Philly yet? I don't think so, no. He wow. wanted to see the Liberty Bell, and I was like, I mean, okay. okay. I waited in line to see the Liberty Bell one time, and it, I was in line for like 30 seconds with with uh, my friend Chris, and I was like, do we really need to see this bell this bad? And we're like, no, it's fine, and we walked away. But um, I, I just – I don't know how to like be a tour guide. It, 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 it's like Philadelphia's obviously got plenty to show around, but I, like – I don't know if I'd like, I don't know what to show. Do I just show like generic? This is where Benjamin Franklin used to go to, to have breakfast. This is where, um, but anyway, um, so there was this sort of guilty pleasure, and, and I kind of like I had opportunities to do other stuff. Like there was this art uh, exhibit thing that I kind of felt bad that I, not that I didn't feel bad that I didn't go to, but I didn't go to. I was tired, but to just sit at home and do nothing was freeing sometimes sometimes it's beautiful i agree it was so free oh my god yeah i mean i i can understand being disappointed that that you know you didn't get to see brad who i i think it's safe to say is your best friend i don't like to use that term best friend okay he's a close friend of yours how about that (laughs) he's one of your close friends right (laughs) um Hey, it's not like MySpace where you have your top eight anymore, so we don't got to worry about that. He would be in my but, top uh, eight. I'll give him that. I top four I would we'll be see. as well. well. We'll see about top four. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I agree with you. Um, sometimes it is really freeing when plans fall through and you can just do whatever. Like, yeah. I, I hate to admit it, but I have binge watched the fourth season of Narcos the last three, four days, and I'm now done with it. Um, <laughs> I took a bath so yesterday. Awesome. <laughs> Nice. Um, and that's something I haven't done in a, a long time. So we So I found the, the restricted goods. Okay. Do you mind if I just list these real quick? Yeah. Okay. So in the Czech Republic, the import pro uh, prohibitions are Czechs, alcoholic beverages. Czechs as in like, like written checks? Like money checks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Animal products, obviously blood and gelatin. You can't send Uh-oh. coffee. You can't send CDs or compact 
compact discs. <laughs> That's because they're just like, what a uses come on, those dude, 2018. <laughs> right, right. Email it. But here, here we go. Here we go, Jared. You can't send computer comp- components and parts, cotton seeds, drugs non-prescription. I think that's pretty clear. Electronic equipment. Yeah, I wouldn't consider. Fabrics. I tell you, you can get away with the dongle, dongle, though. Probably. Food stuffs. That makes laser sense. Laser discs, liquor, oil products, perishables, plants and plant products. That all makes sense. Pornographic materials. Why? Who cares? I don't know. Radar equipment. Oh, maybe um, there's different legal ramifications on, right. um, like in in Asia, True. there's all that blurred out stuff. <laughs> you also can't send shoes. Really? Sports equipment. Shoes. Uh, I've sent shoes before. Yep. Oh, not to the Czech yep. Republic though, I guess specifically. Right. You better send me a new fly pair of Jordans to go with my Jordan sweatsuit. Yeah, I'm going to get arrested by the federal government. <laughs> right. I have an uncle uh, that's you, a federal agent for uh-huh. the post office, too. He might come to my – kick my door in himself. <laughs> there you go. You also – not that anyone He's my actually cousin. sends He's my these uncle. anymore. Did I say uncle? He's my cousin. You said uncle? He's my cousin. Oh, yeah, yeah, cousin. I don't know okay. why I had to correct that. It also, matter, tapes but. and video cassettes and also toys. <sighs> that's interesting. Well, toys kind of make sense, too. There's a lot of too. stuff you can – for example, uh, I believe Kinder eggs are illegal in America because mm-hmm. there's. I've had students ask me about because that. Because they're like a choking hazard, I believe. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, so I guess toys ca- and kind of makes sense. I guess that kind of makes sense. It seems ridiculous, but I also get it. Right. So yeah, I think. Fair. I don't think do- dongles count, count on that. Okay. When I hear computer equipment, I think actual equipment, I think screens. I think um, hard drives. I think processors. I think sound boards, sound cards. I, th- I think actual equipment to run a computer. I don't think a dongle. Well, you think I couldn't put this uh, iPhone dongle through the mail to Czech Republic? It's like, oh, whoa, that's we could a t- piece t- of we computer could, equipment could right there. See. You plug that into your audio <laughs> interface. That is computer. E- and that plugs into your computer. That is computer equipment. And you, we are right. arresting you to the fullest of our capabilities. Speaking of being arrested to the fullest of their of their capabilities, here on the Untranslatable Podcast, we like to give praise, and we also like to take away praise when necessary. And I have to do an official retraction <clears throat> on the Untranslatable Podcast. Do you remember the story of um, the people, the New Jersey couple? That yep. uh, I know where you're going with this. Oh, yeah. you saw that. You continue, talk about though, it. You're continue. better at explaining stories to, than me. Well, it was quite a conundrum. <laughs> so, so it turns out all three people that were involved in the 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 I don't even remember which episode we've done. So no, I don't know. It was a while ago. It was a couple months ago. Probably. But uh, yeah, we did a. It wasn't a shout out. It was like the opposite of a shout out. Or no, we <laughs> no, did because we were shout out, shout outing the homeless guy. Because alleged. Right. Well, let's start with the original story. Originally, what we had heard was that there um, there was a couple from New Jersey that was in Philadelphia, and um, they didn't have. Um, they were low on gas and they didn't have enough gas money to get back home. So the homeless guy gave his last twenty dollars to uh, for for gas money for them to get home. And so what they did as a thank you is they started a GoFundMe. And on the GoFundMe, they said, let's raise money for this uh, generous homeless guy. And um, they, they set the original bar, they, uh, or they initially sought to raise $10,000, but uh, in the end, it raised over $400,000. And mm-hmm. um, allegedly, uh, what happened was, and this part is actually true, the um, couple would not give the money to the homeless guy. That part is true. And the homeless guy came after them and sued them. That part is also true. Right. However, where the uh, story went off the rails is the homeless guy was also involved. So they came up to the homeless guy and um, and they set up this whole thing. to Hey, let's let's figure out this story. Uh, so there was no twenty dollars. There was no running low on gas. That was a whole story that they thought of. And um, and then they did raise the money, and then they did not give it to him. And then he sued them, and they said they uh, would have gotten away with it <laughs> if you hadn't sued us. <laughs> that's, that's like a Scooby Doo scenario right there. So we because they had to give him the money, he's lawsuits. like, "Fuck you guys! We, I, we're all." And he's like, "Dude, you're in on this too." So like, you're suing us, like which, w- uh, w- like it's weird for I, I don't even know what to say right now because I understand why he's suing them, but it's like, dude, you know you're in on this too, so you're part of this crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Like if yep, and now all three of them are facing jail time. <laughs> yes, and um, apparently they had had, um, I believe it was like sixty thousand texts going back and forth with one another. So like this oh, was wow. a thing that they had like planned out, and um, it's ridiculous. And apparently they like were uh, planning to write some book, and they were like gamblers, and they had a lot of debts, and they had like a, um, and they had, like spent a lot of money on uh luxury handbags a new york uh, uh a new year's trip to las vegas in a bmw uh also oh, used the donated funds to pay back nine thousand dollars they owed to relatives and quote unquote hit the casinos hard <laughs> <laughs> well at least they went out with a bang i guess before they went to jail oh my god it, it's it, it, <laughs> it, it's so crazy but, but it still speaks to the level of greediness where it's like you still could have gone away with this. You raised four hundred thousand dollars. You couldn't give them, let's say, a hundred grand. Hundred thousand, yeah, two hundred thousand. And yeah. you still couldn't, yeah, a hundred grand is still the greediness in me. Where it's like, listen, give him something. Where it's like he's right. like at least for he's not going to sue you right away if he's going to sue you. Where it's like it's right. just it's like it, and it's just like, and it's like it's so funny that you trusted and this guy apparently actually is homeless. That is true as well. But they okay. did, I believe, just approach him to put this whole thing together. But it's just like... It's such a crazy s- scam and scheme. That's just wild. It just shows how greedy people are. Right. Uh, it, it, it is very Without Scooby-Doo-esque, too. It's like you guys... Like, <laughs> you just is. imagine them, like, like, like sneaking around and tripping over each other's feet and, like, tumbling down a staircase. Right. And it's like, oh! <laughs> it does I've seem been... so, like, so shoddily put together. Right, I've been watching a lot of Brooklyn Nine Nine, and this also sounds like a case that would happen on Brooklyn, <laughs> which Nine-Nine, is a comedy where, television like, series, <laughs> right? About like crazy police detectives right. <laughs> who have these crazy cases. Yeah. Oh man, that's yeah. I read that the other day, and I couldn't believe it. I didn't even think about bringing it up and uh, apologizing for us shouting him out. But yeah, <laughs> that's the first F thing I thought of that is, is us talking about that, and I was like, oh, I got to bring right. this up. You'll have to be our official uh, shout out. Uh, Check sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah, make sure make sure I'm not spreading lies or uh, don't give people the full story. I think I actually know. I think the casino that they were at is is close by me. I can't think of many other casinos in Philadelphia. When I look behind the gas station, it looked kind of familiar. I think I know the casino they're at, which was close to me. But anyway, um, oh, nice. yeah, it's just like that 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 plan. See, it, it, that's the thing though. In construction, it seems so simple. It's like oh, that's perfect. I mean, like that would work so easily, and then just give him two hundred grand, and then there you go. You guys walked away fe- looking like heroes, and right. everyone made a lot of money. And it's like, no, you're so greedy that two hundred grand is not enough. You need four. You need all four hundred. Right. To go well, quote th- unquote gamble hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think what happens hard. too. Right. Well, what I think what happens too is, I'm sure they had no idea how much money they were going to be getting. Right. And then when they saw that number, they just got too greedy. Well, that well, let me ask you this. Yeah, obviously, four hundred grand is way more than they ever imagined would happen. They initially set the the goal at ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand, right? Do you think if they would have gotten ten thousand dollars, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, somewhere in there? No, let's put. Let, let me say anywhere from eight to fifteen. Do you think mm-hmm. they would have split it? Or do you think they well, would have taken that as well and done the exact same would, thing just with, have, I with think, that? <laughs> I think they would have taken that as well because it's. I think there's kind of because that's two a lot of money to too. This. It it is, but you know if they had what was it nine thousand dollars in debt? Yeah, but if you have nine thousand dollars in debt, then you don't have that. Like you don't have that much money to begin with. I feel like right. Well, th- I think they still would have kept it. I bet you. I think they would have done the exact same thing. Ju- like, yeah. I because and especially since even though they have nine nine thousand dollars in debt, I think to them, I think especially to them who are you know uh, clearly addicted to gambling as well, I think that fifteen grand is just as appealing. If uh, oh, as that four hundred, because sure. they would have had no idea that that four hundred would even would have been an option, and to them just a pot at five hundred or excuse me. Fifteen grand or ten grand at once is a lot of money. Still, yeah. And they would have been like, I mean, I, I think they would have done the exact same thing. I I agree. They probably would have. That's for sure. You guys are a piece of shit. This is what's wrong with the world. I'm serious yeah. when I say this is what's wrong people, with the yeah, world. Yeah, people people are greedy. These cheap, are... these cheap crime, like these cheap pathetic crimes. 
Well, you know what? You know what else is interesting? At least do some lo- good laundering or something like that. <laughs> Make it big. Well, th- I think I think Make that complicates things real even weight. more. <laughs> but uh, As the what kids say. what what I was gonna say though is um, that I read this really interesting article earlier about how really it's kind of crazy the fact that we have billionaires because there's no way you can really become a billionaire without exploiting a lot of people. Right. Yeah, there, there's really no uh, no f- fully ethical way to be a billionaire. Right. And what I don't get is how do you become a billionaire and you have all this money that you're never going to be able to spend your entire life and then you have people who – can't even put food on their table. It's a modern we day live in such form. A crazy. I mean, it's a modern day form of of like a royalty almost. Yeah, I would. Where agree. it's like you prove you prove your worth just by your uh, your spoils, but um, mm-hmm. and how much you own. Where it's like this is all mine. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like it, it does seem so hard to comprehend. Like I I don't even know how to really respond to that because it it makes no sense to me because. Like we talked about that dude a couple weeks ago, who was a shout out to him. He was a billionaire. Uh, he had multiple the Swiss billions. guy. Yeah, and he yeah, gave yeah. away a billion. Uh-huh. And it's like that amount of money is insane. That's more than some countries have. And right. um, and he's still living just as comfortably with or without that billion. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can't even imagine that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely wild. That's for sure. Oh man. Well. Should we head over to the shout out? Yeah, let's get some positivity. Because uh, we, yeah, had to, we had to. We had a little negative. Let, let's, right? let's replace that positivity we had to take from that homeless guy and give it to someone more deserving. That's fair. All right. My first shout out goes, to, goes out to the country of India. They get their first ever dedicated elephant hospital near the Taj Mahal. Oh, nice. As you know, Jared, and some of our listeners probably know by now. I would definitely say I am a big animal lover, have been since I was a kid. And I think it's great that um, that these countries are uh, doing things like this to keep their animals safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah? You, you want to say something? No, it's just very – we'll get to it later. We'll get to it later. It's just funny that you say that. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, it's it's – I, I uh, this is one of the things I hate about social media is I I I was just scrolling through um through Twitter the other or the other day and I saw like a video of some some idiot doing like a like a hunting an elephant and the elephant mm-hmm. like turned around and chased after him and it was very satisfying to watch the elephant chase after him but it, the elephant chased after him because he killed another elephant but uh granted that was in Africa but um yeah it's it, it I I I think it's uh. It's it's good to see just a, a a level of respect on on like a national level like that, not just a bunch of nonprofits trying to do it, but actually like a national, uh, which national effort means a real budget to to do stuff rather than right. relying oh, on donations sure. and you know absolutely. So and so stuff. shout out to India for the first um, ever elephant hospital, and my next one. My next shout out, my last shout out of this episode goes out to one of my favorite metal bands growing up as a kid. Metallica has donated or will donate $100,000 to the California wildfire relief efforts. Wow. And they also uh, had an all acoustic benefit concert um, to also raise funds um, for this as well. We are, are we lucky to have grown up in the the midwest because where we grew up you probably had more chances of hurricane uh, excuse me tornadoes than i did because you were (laughs) kind of more closer to big fields but Mm -hmm. i never like i had we had tornado watches and warnings but i've never really experienced a tornado and we had obviously ice and snow but like it just seems like places like in kansas or oklahoma or texas where tornadoes are like real threats um, or not real threats, but bigger threats, or like um, on the East Coast where there's more chances of hurricanes, or like or, or on the uh, West Coast where there's chances of uh, earthquakes and fires. I don't know. I just always feel like I'm lucky or something to have avoided such terrible, uh, you know, uh, natural like weather, like weather. Just in these things, even though they seem to be happening more, these still are just normal occurrences, like natural occurrences. Right. 
It's funny you mentioned tornadoes. There was actually a tornado in Dexter in 2010, I think. Oh, you were there when you were in high school? I was. No, no, no. It was 2012, maybe. Oh, we were in uh, Albion? Uh, 2012. Yeah, I was at Albion. I was actually, yeah, 315, 2012. I was actually sitting in jazz band rehearsal. I got a text from my girlfriend at the time, and she had said, um, she had said, hey, have you heard from your parents? There's a tornado in Dexter. And, like, I didn't get that text until after rehearsal. because uh, you were, like, in the basement? Right. Yeah. And I, I called my parents, and it turns out, um, I guess the sky turned, like, this weird color green. And uh, my mom and dad were talking on the phone, and my mom was like, you need to go downstairs. And uh, at the time, we had our, our basset hound, Sadie, and take Sadie into the basement with you, right? And my dad was like, no, I'm just out on, the, on our back deck looking <laughs> at the sky. And then the phone died. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, so so scare the crap that out of like my mom. That sounds like a movie. Right? Thankfully, they were all okay, and there were actually no casualties. Okay. There were quite a few homes that were destroyed, and there's like a small laundromat um, right by my parents' house. That w- The roof went you know, completely flying off the building. By the way, right by your parents' house in Dexter means like five minutes away. To ten minutes. That's true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Good point. But yeah, so so we did have that away. one tornado. Yeah, it's it's at least a mile. That's true. But uh, my dad could see it, and it went down like a street that is also only about a mile away from my parents' house. But thankfully, nobody was injured or killed. Uh, well, I don't know if anybody was injured or not, but no casualties. <sighs> and uh, Dexter has uh, since been able to repair all the buildings and everything. Shout out to Dexter. Recovering, right. staying strong. That's right. No tornado's gonna take you down. I think there was even a billboard like a couple months later that said uh, Dexter doesn't fear tornadoes or something goofy like that. And I'm like, wh- I'm like, why? Why would you? Yeah, I you mean, just, you just that, that's a little ridiculous. So right. uh, yesterday I went to a local um, beer store, and sorry, I, I'm talking away from the microphone like a professional, and. Um, I just looked into the uh, into the refrigerator and I was like, "What am I gonna What am I gonna get? What looks interesting to me? What looks interesting mm-hmm. to me by name, by design, by um, taste? Why by you know what it would be in it? Not taste. I couldn't taste them. Um, and this is what I stumbled upon. So this was my first choice, and I thought it was very apropos to your first shout out about the elephants because this is a Weyerbacher. Weyerbacher is probably how you'd say it because it's an American. Mm -hmm. Last Chance IPA. Oh, nice. I like that. It is from um, it is from Easton, Pennsylvania, founded in 1995, and um, it is a as I said, it's an IPA. It's 5.9 percent. It's a can, and it also look at the uh, the uh, flicker thingy. The opener is gold, not real gold. I would assume. and it you also has know. one of those old. It has one of those kind of more low budget sticker applications of the of the. I logo. like it though. It looks cool. And I, did you? And right here, there's also a um, a little story that I'll get to in a second. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you look at that. Is there a dog or a wolf? That is a dog. a dog. Right. So uh, let me open it first, and then we'll. Uh... Yeah, crack that bad. Oh, boy and open. I actually, you, you, all right, you you got me. I'm putting it in a glass. Chad uh, converted Good me. Good call. Cause I have been coughing up uh, some my, some blood recently, and I'm nervous what? if it's because. Uh, are, you, are you serious? No. <laughs> I was gonna say. I'm a peak physical. You had condition. me worried for a second. That's true. I'm pouring. Isn't it. that from always? Isn't that from always sunny? This is the the peak male physique. Uh, yeah, he does say peak physical condition from time to time. <laughs> right. Okay. So. I'm so sad that show is not on Netflix anymore. Oh, I know. Ooh, let me see that. That looks like it's a good color. It does as look well. like a good color, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm all over the place. Uh, doesn't that look nice? Explain that it. Looks almost, that looks almost like a Hefeweizen. Like it looks like it, or maybe it's the camera, but it looks like there's a little bit of cloudiness. No, it is a little it's bit. Like an, yeah, it's a dark brown a little bit. Not mm-hmm. a dark brown, but a darker brown. And you can see like a, there's kind of like a gradient to the, uh, maybe it's just a light, but it is a, um, it is in it. Let me smell it. Yeah, smells like an IPA. I'll, I'll, I, that's which okay. is an uh, India Pale Ale, not Indian Pale Ale. 
And uh, let, can I read a little bit about this company? Let me Absolutely. read some of these. There's a lot of stuff Please written do. on this can, and I'm going to read it. Drink beer. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, drink beer, save animals. A portion of the proceeds from this can of delicious IPA goes to help save animals. Uh, want your own pet on a can? Visit lastchancefun.com. For example, Finn. Finn was just four months old when he was hit by a car. Once his broken leg was on the mend, he made his way to uh, Pennsylvania from West Virginia. Now he spends his days playing, gazing out the window, and just being a fun-loving pup. That's nice. Finn. <laughs> okay, nice. And so uh, a pro a proceeds of every beer go goes, uh, every last chance from made by Weyerbacher, uh, go to um, Last Chance fund and finn is uh is is uh my uh sponsored uh <laughs> you're welcome finn good boy oh 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 no a hashkey clock <laughs> nice. Woo! now let me take a sip of this. <laughs> oh man i love your enthusiasm <laughs> I, was just... I love it uh i, I love a well-timed drop it's even better when i'm laughing through it um, right. No. I'm just, uh, anyway, let me read the marketing blurb that explains this beer. Last Chance IPA uh, is a 5.9% uh, alcohol, alcohol by volume. Oh, excuse me. Is 5.9% alcohol by Is a full-flavored hop assault delightfully lacking in balance. I find that interesting what, that they said that. Uh, anyway, we've added a combination of Centennial, Cascade, Simcoe, and Columbus hops to produce pungent aromas of grapefruit, pine, and citrus. Weibacher Brewing Company. Oh, that's about the donation. I already we already know that. Uh, so yeah, I'll give you my official. Uh... Oh, is it good? Oh yeah. The 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 it's it's very citrusy. I I, I recognize that immediately. Okay. Oh yeah. And it is it is very hoppy. Um, I don't know if you would like it because it's clearly IPA in the sense that even though it's citrusy, there's a very hoppy aftertaste. But the initial taste on your mouth is very citrusy, and it's almost like a burst. And then after, once it sits, the hops settle in. But I like it. And it actually kind of tastes like it would be stronger than 5.9, although 5.9 is not nothing. Right. That's no baby beer, that's for but sure. But I think that's just more, uh, I don't know, it, It's I, I like it. I like it. Mm. So, of course, I went to lastchancefund.com, uh, and I saw, first of all, before, let me first say that um, they have a commercial. Do you, uh, Can I, can I, well, we could do two things here. The commercial is like two minutes, so we don't have to play it. But let me just say, this is one of the worst acted things I've ever seen in my life. And I thought, really, am I missing the point? Is the point that hey, listen, we're not gonna we're not gonna spend money producing this beautifully made commercial. This goes to the animals, not to us. But I was looking at this commercial. I was like, dude, just the way that the dude turned around to. So how it started was the guy handed him a beer, mm -hmm. and the way he turned around to get the beer, it was almost like why you why you, who no one turns around and <laughs> he was like this. Do you see me? He was like this. And I was like, it's like we you're not, that's not a baby that Are you he's making passing out you? with somebody. Like, no, it's yeah, like he was what? passing him a baby. It's like, and I was oh. like, what is happening here? This commercial was ridiculous, but I, I and it was just so. And then so what was essentially happening in the commercial was, um, uh, he was saying that like every time you you take a sip of this beer or, or buy a beer, this beer money is donated to a uh, to you know to a dog. So every time you took a sip, a, a dog would just like appear in the room. And his acting okay. and, and the production was kind of low value to low budget to the point where like a couple of them he would go <gasps> before the dog even showed up so he'd be like <gasps> yes. and then the dog showed up yes. and I was like you couldn't like like you couldn't time that so the dog showed up and then he got afraid <laughs> it's like what are you, like at first I was like what are you jumping at it's like oh a dog's there now <laughs> right. so it was just kind of like shoddily produced and I was like is this am, am I missing the point is this the joke that um do you want to I kind of want to play some of it for you now. But it, well, I won't be able to see it. That's why don't true. you post it on? Why don't you post it on Twitter? That's true. I can post it on Twitter, uh, and man. then I'll go back and watch it. In my new setup, I have no place to write stuff down. Uh -oh. I'll probably listen to this though. 
<laughs> this is why we can't have a uh, nice anyway here. um yeah so I, I i do shit on the commercial it was hilariously bad to the point where i almost thought that it was I, maybe I, it's on purpose I, yeah i thought it was such high comedy that i didn't get it <laughs> 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 i was like i was like this might be genius um <laughs> anyway i'll i'll say they have donated to over 61 organizations or 61 organizations have be- benefited from uh, from uh, Last Chance IPA. They have mm-hmm. donated a um, two hundred and thirty three thousand six hundred seventy thousand dollars, and counting. Obviously, I bought one, oh, so wow, there's a awesome. couple of more dollars right there. I'm doing my part. <laughs> there you go. And they have helped <laughs> countless animals. Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. Mama, so do you feel? So do you feel like you're uh, you're saving saving the animals, Jared, with every sip you take? Uh, I do. Uh, there's oh, jeez, sorry. <laughs> I uh, was just I was just gonna say has golden any, doodle have appeared in my. <laughs> yeah. Um. By the way, um, you mentioned that um, we you mentioned earlier that you spent a lot of time looking at our Instagram. Hmm. Do you did you happen to look at our DMs the other day? No. Why? You didn't? Come on. You just said you looked at our Instagram all the time. You didn't look at the you didn't see this? I, I look through our like I look at our feed. Well, just that makes sense here. Hold up. I'm gonna I'm gonna check right now, Jared. Let's see. Which the one with the uh, with the uh, giraffe. Oh what oh my god, yes, I did see this. I did see this. Yeah, you responded. Good I, I love your responses. <laughs> So can we can we give a little shout out to uh, <laughs> Can we get do you mind if I give a shout out to uh to Freddie? Oh, Jared. Yeah, oh my god. Oh my gosh. Give a shout out yeah, to Freddie, so, Chad, please. That's right. Shout out to Freddie, who is a <laughs> statue that was put outside. Is it a statue? I thought it was a um stuffed animal. Or is it a statue? It said it said Freddie is one of my statues. I, I thought that was a real alligator watch the by the snowfall. Way. Right. When I went out later, he was gone. His brother misses him terribly. He has no one to play golf with or raid our fridge. I understand that they're just statues, but they have feelings too. Um, yes. So definitely big shout out to Freddie. We hope you find your home, buddy. It's a scary, cold world out there. And yeah, uh, people are heartless. That's true. I want to check true. Out that couple and homeless guy from uh, New Jersey. They might right. know. Also, shout so out, shout out to you, market. Jared, for for such a uh, uh, heartfelt and loving response. Um, appreciate it. Hey, that, that's not all cold, cold darkness inside of me. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> There's also well, some last chance keep, IPA. Inside everybody, of me. keep your eyes out for Freddy. Although I, I'm not sure if it's a gator or if it's a giraffe or gator. what it is. It's a gator. Gator. Okay, well, keep a your very eyes realistic for looking gator too. Don't be afraid. Right. Approach with caution. Yes. So we hope you find your home, Freddie. Um, and we also appreciate whenever our listeners out there send us messages, yeah. regardless of the content. That was definitely an interesting read. Definitely very nice. All right. Well, uh, so Jared, I like this. You beer. said it has kind of a ci- citrusy taste. Mm-hmm. Um, would you compare it at all with any of the tone woods that you tried? Mm, nah, no. Uh, honestly, no. I would say that this is, you know, it's it's because it, it, it's it's the 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 improv was also the double IPA was also um citrusy. But like it, it was not as dark as this beer is, even though it would add more alcohol con- content to it. Right. This almost tastes like it has similar co- alcohol content to the um, to the um, improv. However, you can the darkness that you see. Oh, you can't even see that. The darkness that you see no. does not go unnoted in the flavor. Like it does have a slightly okay. darker flavor than that improv had. Right. So even though it is similar in IPA ness, because <laughs> maybe they probably have a lot of similar hops in there too. But um, right, I think I almost this has got um, like e- even though this is less alcohol, this has got more of a, a fulfill like a filling flavor to it. Okay, I like so it. So does it? 
So does the Weyerbacher Last Chance IPA, does it get Jared's stamp of approval? It does. It's worth, yeah. Shout out to Finn. Shout out to Weyerbacher. Shout out to Last Chance IPA. Nice. Uh, Jared, do you happen to know what time it is? Uh, oh. I think I do. That Rolex is always very punctlish, that's yes. for sure. Nice and punctual. Well, Jared, I want to start off our untranslatable section with a good one in German for you. And maybe you know this one. We'll see. The untranslatable is, Da kannst du Gift drauf nehmen, which means you can take poison on that. You can bet your life on that? Ooh, hit that ham horn, my dude. I don't know if I have heard that before, but I, I could. Uh, my context game is on point. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like that. It's like you can you can bet your life on that. Essentially, that would probably be our right. uh, of our form of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have I have uh, three. I have a German one as well, but I'll save that for last. Uh, my first one is Tagalog, and it's Mabigat uh, Ang Kame, and it's literally heavy handed. Heavy handed. Mm-hmm. Is that Hmm. Is it as obvious as I think it is? It is. I, well, you tell me. I mean, it's heavy-handed. Just somebody who has like, like a like a big temper, or they're no sir clumsy, maybe no sir. No. Okay. What's heavy-handed? Heavy-handed is lazy. Oh, that's interesting. How, that's how they okay. use heavy-handed. And I'm gonna do one more because uh, my second, I have my second one is also Tagalog. However, this one is. Uh, Magan Ang Kame, light-handed. What do you think that means? Light-handed must be your, I don't know, your, you're talented, you're good at something, you... Ooh, no. No? No. <laughs> what is it? It is someone that is easily provoked and or easily hits another person. Oh, interesting. Okay. Get your uh, um, yeah. It's not not how us Americans would think think of those terms at all. Not no, definitely not at all. But hey, everyone has different meanings for something, and that's what an untranslatable is. Uh, so there you go. Right. All right. Well, I have one that's half Czech, half German for you. How does that work? It's a it's a Czech saying, but okay. they have two German words in it. So it is jedeto eins uh, jedeto uh, jedeto eins zwei. Which means it goes one two. Does it mean like A B C one two three? Ein zwei. Uh, well, well, what does that Easy mean? Easy as A B C one two three. Yes, sir. Do re mi so great. I can't remember. Uh, no. All right, I got one other one for you in Czech, Jared. Okay. And this is tři nátsta uh, kom komnata <laughs> or thirteenth okay. chamber. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. That's the R with the hot check. The <laughs> okay, yeah. Ooh. Tri comnata. What's that? Thirteenth chamber. Uh, I got my eye on you. <laughs> nope. Okay, I thought maybe it's like I got one saved up in the thirteenth chamber just for you. <laughs> so you're That's my American. ah, you were thinking chamber is a gun. Yeah, I think they mean chamber more as like a room. Oh, oh. Like the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, it's like you're like ba- unlucky? Uh, like you're stuck qu- in room 13? Not quite. Because Europeans um, are afraid of 13, aren't they? Because they, they tend to like take 13 out of uh, elevators and floors and stuff. Do they really? I didn't know that. I've seen it happen in Germany and France and okay. before. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, this uh, the 13th chamber is like a sore spot you don't want to talk about. The oh. closest, the closest, maybe English skeletons. equivalent might be skeletons in your closet. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, yeah, let's not go into the thirteenth chamber. That one's locked off. Right. Okay, I like that. Um, my last one's German as well, and it's uh, Treppenwitz. I mean, I know what this is. Oh. But. Well, explain it, please. So, so a Treppenwitz is I've never when heard you, before. literally, it's a step joke. Die, die Treppen are the steps, like the steps you walk up, or the stairs. Stair joke maybe is a better translation. And it's where you you like think of a comeback after you've already left or you're already walking up the stairs. Right. right. Which definitely happens to me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I hate that. 
All right, I have one more, and it's German for you, um, and, and for all of our listeners, not just you. <laughs> no, it's just for uh, me. It, everyone. It is, just, uh, fast forward thirty seconds. Uh, by the way, right. on the new iPhone update on the podcast, uh-huh. have do you, have you noticed that the forward now is not fifteen; it's now thirty seconds, but the backwards is fifteen. That. It's annoying. What is this? Thought this was America. How am I supposed to skip through all the commercials? <laughs> right. <laughs> More efficiently. Now you got to skip and then like realize you're listening to actual podcasts and go back 15, which is actually kind of nice if you think about it. Skip ahead and then like, oh, okay. Oh, I, that's true. Maybe so, that's why. No, I think they did it because so, it makes it harder to skip through commercials. I That's Could why be. I think they did it. I don't know. But but does, but, does, but does I, Apple benefit from those commercials? I don't think they do. I don't know. Maybe they benefit I'm not sure. from people like using their bandwidth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, anyways, my last untranslatable for you is: Das ist ein Streit um des Kaisers Bart. That's a, a Streit argument. Yeah. Okay. That's an. There's an argument. That's what I thought you said. Argument mm-hmm. on the uh, on the boss's beard. It's an argument on the emperor's beard. Okay, yeah, Kaiser's an emperor. I guess, yeah, I guess that's. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's an argument on the emperor's beard. Mm-hmm. Like you're having an argument with yourself? Nope. I, I don't know. We have a similar expression. At least we have the word hair in it. Not beard, but hair. And there's obviously no emperor because we don't have emperors in America. Um. I don't know. I don't know. So if we were arguing about if we were arguing about why there are 30 second flash forwards in the new update right. and I made some very um like little details you could say you could say das ist ein Streit um des Kaisers Bart. Oh, that's like a um I'm trying to think of the hair like so it's like minor details that don't really matter. Mm-hmm. Right. It's to split hairs. Right. Splitting You're hairs. Splitting hairs. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, all right. You're splitting hairs. Yeah, it's a kind of a good one. Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, time for us to talk about some of our false friends from English to German. Um, I just wanted to give our listeners a little info about the basics of what a false friend or a false cognate is. It's pretty straightforward. It's one word in, in German in this case that has a completely different meaning than the English word, although they look the same. They could be either pronounced the same, spelled the same, or both. Um, And the interesting thing about English and German is that English is also a Germanic language. However, there are also a lot of English words that have come from other languages, such as French, for example. And then there becomes, uh, there are some discrepancies in different words as they change over time, especially if we take a word from French, that has a similar spelling or pronunciation than an older German word that was never like anglicized or became popular in English. Can you think of any um, slip-ups that you've had off the top of your head? Any uh, cognate slip-ups in your early days? Well, kind of. So go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So I was in, I was in Berlin and I may have told the story on this podcast before, but I was in Berlin with my family. The first time I was in Germany we went to this nice little Italian place in, in Berlin uh, and got pizza. And I wanted a pepperoni pizza. Classic. Uh, <laughs> wanted a pepperoni pizza. And uh, the the waiter brings out my pizza, and it is a pizza with jalapeno peppers on it. I think like every American spicy peppers. probably has experienced. I, I've experienced that exact same thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, mine was when I moved to Germany, and it was actually like I was either delivered to us or something like that. And I it mm-hmm. came home, and I was like, "Aw!" And my parents don't mind peppers, and they're like, "Oh, this is a mm-hmm. well." They'll like eat them, like you know, like salads when they put them there, they'll eat them. Right. So like, oh, this isn't that bad. And I'm like, I don't want this. <laughs> and you have I mean, to I say, still ate the pizza. It was good, but yeah. What do you have to say though, Jared? Salami. Uh huh. Or sharfa salami. If if they have that as an option, I think that's closer. Spicy salami. Is that smaller it's salami? Closer. So it would be yeah, like crispier? Smaller salami. That would be so much yeah. better. I didn't know that. Yep. I spent four Dep- years in Germany. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, it depends on the places you go. Some places don't have it. Other places do. Okay. There's actually a, a restaurant here in Komutov that has it, and that's usually what I get 
when I get pizza there. A, a classic one that stumped me for a while in my early days of learning was, I, we've mentioned this one before too, was Ville. Ich will. Oh, yep. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, I would, because uh, even I think before I learned it, I heard it. Mm-hmm. And um, it sounds like I, I will, ich will, but it mm-hmm. means I want to. So yes. um, mm-hmm. saying actually I will is way harder. <laughs> uh, ich werde. Yeah, but it depends on what else you're saying and all that stuff. And that's true. But um, yeah, that's definitely a, a really dangerous. And as a German teacher, I've definitely had some students mistake werden is will in German, and then wollen or will, which is want. Do you have a lot of common um, ones you hear in classrooms from uh, from um, you know in German classes or from your um, teaching English to Czech people? Do they have any uh, Czech to? I know we're not talking about that, but. Not well, curious. so ch- a lot of Czechs will, um, I think the verbs for teach and for learn are very, very similar in Czech, or they might even use the same verb. Okay. Because I've, I've had students say um, that he, he learned me this, and they mean he taught me this. Isn't that the same in German? Uh, teach and learn are is the same? No. How do you say teach? You, you, uh, um, le- they're very close. Lehren That's and lernen. Oh, lehren is also the verb for for teach. Yes, uh, der okay. Lehrer, and then lehren would be to teach. Okay, uh-huh. all right. Or unterrichten, I guess. <sighs> but yeah, you could also use that as well. But yeah, so I don't know. I haven't noticed as many Czech ones because my Czech isn't good enough yet to mm-hmm. be able to pick up on some of these. Um, but uh, they they definitely confuse um, teach and learn sometimes, and also lend and borrow. That's a tough one because I think they may they might use also a similar verb or the same uh, verb in Czech for both. Yeah. Okay. So now, yeah. I'm trying to think but back anyways. to like my fr- my German friends that I spoke English with when I lived there, but their English right. wasn't that great. And when you say that, because mm-hmm. that stuff does kind of I he- I've heard that in German as well. Right. So sure. give us some. Uh, you said you have a uh, uh, extensive list of false. Yes, cognates. I do. Yes, I do. Okay. The first one I want to start out with. Is a German word bald and the English word bald. Yes. So bald means what in German, Jared? Soon. And obviously bald means you have no hair on your head. Uh, yes. And it's so pronounced is... very, like, the, oh, like essentially the exact same. Bald. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bald. And I, I guess I pronounce them a little differently. Bald would be yeah, German prob- and then yeah. bald. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the yeah. A is a little it's different, but it's still really close. American me. It's this is American really... Jared talking. Right. But yeah, I'm not sure why we use two different words. I didn't do the extensive enough research to tell you why they're different. Um, I, I would. I, I'm interested, and I don't. Uh, we need like a full on historical linguist to explain this. Right. But how do these, like, where where do these turns happen in, in the language? How does that happen? Well, it happens. I mean, well, it depends on the the type of turn. Um, if it's uh like a. A sound change usually it has some type of shift. No, I mean turn as um, in where, where does like where how is it that bald becomes soon? Where in, in another language it's like a completely different word. And is it just that prob- they happened like the same sound happened to be put together for two different languages? It could be, or it, or they just have a different root. So so according to um, according to um, Google at least, the English word bald is Middle English. Uh, probably from a base meaning white patch, whence the archaic sense marked or streaked with white compares with Welsh mm. shuffle ball, denoting a horse with a white mark on its face. So what you're telling me is bald, the uh, um, English term, mm-hmm. is the white man's term for having no hair is what I'm hearing. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. If I ever sense. were to lose all of my hair as a black person, I might have to find you my own You got to come up term. with a new word. That's right. Come up with your my new hair, word. My skin is not white below this curly hair. <laughs> so now I'm going to Google the German one and see. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Uh, we can't do this for every one. No, we won't. But I'm, I'm just but curious. I am, yeah. I'm just curious. And I don't know. Do you have to go to, to like etymology? Yeah, and I'm not. Let's see here, and of course this is in this is in Dutch, so um, no dice. I'm not sure where it comes from. I'm assuming it just comes from Germanic. Uh, All right, you know. Let's keep going. But more. Yeah. I want okay, more. so so yeah, there's a lot more. 
Um, chef versus um, chef. That's a popular one in a lot of languages. That's not mm-hmm. just German. But that one, uh, that one got me for a while too. Chef can can you, uh-huh, can you is explain uh, to our is German, I believe Spanish, I mean Hefe, but uh, Hefe, yeah, I believe French as well. Could I, I don't want to sure. overstep my bounds, uh, and it's probably some other languages is for boss. Yes, but in, but in um, English, chef only means someone that cooks like a professional cooking cooking person. I would imagine that comes from French though. Chef, it? yeah, but English I think term. chef in French is also boss. I don't want to once again, uh, bo- uh, boss translated to French. Nope, chef comes from French. Patron, but it means head. Chef means head in uh, 19th century French. Okay, because so head, head of the kitchen. Head as if you're saying head as in like your head on your head would be tête. I do know that. Right. I think they mean head isn't like boss, right. I would imagine. Okay. Shut yeah. The okay, up. the next one I have. And this this one's a little tricky because the German word so the, the German word arm, A R M, has two meanings. It can mean your arm, like on your body, but arm can also mean poor. Yes. Whereas English we have arm as in just the arm on your body and there's no other word. But I guess it's pretty easy not to mix those up because when would those ever be used on the it is so um it had kind um. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, there you go. <laughs> then you could then you could use both of them. But yeah, that one's not as tricky, but I feel like some Americans maybe if they see it in a newspaper they might get confused yes, because for sure. it could mean poor. Yes. Like so, yeah. like like the uh, di ama, it's like the the arms. Why are they talking about arms? Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. The next one is art versus art. Yes. And art in German means like type. Yes. Like schnitzel Wiener art means like a schnitzel Viennese type or Viennese style. Do you ever uh, teach classes specifically on cognates? And uh... I, d- I don't. Okay. That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. I mean, I actually think it might be better to teach lessons about the false cognates. Because a lot of the cognates, I mean, the students, right. if they hear them, they'll probably get them or understand them. Right, no reason to teach them what they would already know just right. by hearing. But the false cognates would be good. Okay. That's for sure. Another one I have here is spenden and spending, or spend and spend. Spenden means what, Jared? I don't know. To donate. Oh. Doesn't mean to spend, but to donate. Oh, that could be a, uh, uh, that could be a, good, a good mistake that someone makes. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, no, true. I thought I was spending a bunch of money. I didn't realize I was donating right. it. Right. Or they use it also with like donating blood. You'll see Blutspenden okay. to, to donate blood. Okay. Another one I have is uh, Brief versus Brief. Yes, Brief is an essay or a paper. Or, or a no, letter. like a letter. Excuse me. A letter. Mm-hmm. And Brief in English means like to be, be brief. quick. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Then we also have boat and boat. That's not a false cognate, though. Um, well, yeah, it lo- well by sound it's not, but it looks like boot. Oh yeah, I got you. B o o t versus b o a t. So I think when a lot of Americans see it, they automatically assume boot, which is actually Stiefel in German. Can I give you um um as much as I love your list of American to German cognates? Can I give you some? Mm-hmm. I was thinking, cognates is uh, not just an American, or excuse me, an English thing. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, I wonder if there are any cognates between Dutch and German. Oh, yeah. Let's so I some. have some of those as well. We'll start off, and I, I want to quiz you, see if you can figure some of these out. Okay. Uh, we'll start off easy. Uh, ze. Okay. And the, are these cognates or false cognates? And... Uh, well, okay, let me put it this way. In in, in Dutch, it's ze, mm-hmm. and in German, it's mea, okay. which is see. Uh-huh. And then in Dutch, mea is a uh, lake, and apparently ze is a lake in German. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's just a little switcheroo. But there are, like, actual false cognates. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Bellen, what's Bellen? I mean, in German, it means to, like, that's, like, bark. Yes. Okay. 
But in Dutch, in Dutch, what do you think it means? Doesn't mean bark. Um, to ring bells? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> ich bella. I, I I would I would um wonder if if it's not just bellen or if it has like or if it's on bellen. That would just be my question. To bella jemand an. Oh, is it to like flirt with somebody? No, to call someone. To call oh, call somebody. Okay. <laughs> I see you're going with anrufen. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. I wonder yeah, if yeah, I got gotcha. in there. Uh slim schlimm. What's schlimm in German? Schlimm is like bad. What's schlimm in uh Dutch? Slim, schlimm, I don't know how they say it. It's probably slender or slim. No, it's not. You're you're so simple in your assumptions, Chad. No Whoa. thought, <laughs> just the first thing that I sounds go with my English gut. to you. This is Dutch to German. This is get your English okay. head out of your uh, out of out of there, and I I don't know. Uh, it is Dutch for smart. Really? Okay. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Uh, this will be uh this will be an easy one maybe. V, which obviously in German is how. Right. Uh, what is it in Dutch? It is also a. I'll give you a clue. Mm-hmm. It is also a who, what, when, why, where. But it's not how. How no. It's not how really V. Hmm. Is it what? No. Where? No. <laughs> when? <laughs> it's who. <laughs> it's who, really? I love how okay. bad you are. This is great. <laughs> um, now, my next one is was, which is obviously German for what. Uh-huh. But in Dutch, uh, it has it means something else. Oh, God. Think about it. And now, you know, I told you to get your American head out of there. Get it back uh-huh. in there. Think about think about it in was. English. Was. Is it wa- Is it? I don't know. The, how was. would you use was in English? If that's just word was, if it was right the word written, how would you not pronounce was? But if it was just the word w a s, how would you use that in English? Also, what? No. <clears throat> Was is how would you? How would oh, you well, oh, God! How, okay, that's too easy. That's how See? the Dutch okay. use it, and that's how the Americans and English okay. speakers was, also use duh. was. Was the Dutch okay. people use was as was? That makes sense. Okay. Oh man. Huh. Oh, that's actually a false cognate with English and German. Var. Yeah. There you go. Var is was, and and it's not war. Yeah. Interesting. There you go. Psst. I'm connecting the dots here very slowly. <laughs> uh, if you, for the uh, listeners, what you can't see is Chad has those Rain Man esque math equations going around his head. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Klarkommen. Do you know what Klarkommen means? K L A R Kommen. Yeah, in in German, Klarkommen is like to like when you make an un- like you reach an understanding uh, to cope with something. Oh, Are you okay, okay with or, do we agree with that? Yeah, yeah, that too. I'm still kind yeah. of impressed by your just general German knowledge right now. It's, I would hope so after a master's in German. <laughs> um, so do you know what? Guess what it means in Dutch? Klarkommen. Klarkommen. Think about it. Take these things very literally to begin with. Don't when be something when something becomes clear. Yes. When Ooh, does some, right. No, that's not what it is, though. We're just oh, started. no. Okay. When does something be, think of when something would become very clear to a Dutch person. Klar kommen. You know, uh, a moment either by yourself or with someone else, and all of a sudden everything is the klar kommen. Everything's very clear. Everything, so com- it's like, everything comes very clear to you. So is it like klar kommen? When you're, when you're in solitude and you like get like an epiphany? No, no. I go. Oh. You're close, but you don't have to be in solitude. You could be in solitude. But when you have an epiphany. No, it's to ejaculate. No. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> yeah. To ejaculate. Oh, my God. Uh. That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it is, it, it is interesting that they do say to cope with is what they define, what they define it as in German. Right. I mean, it is a right. coping mechanism, I guess, as well for, for right. many or some. That's fair. I'd say many, probably more than some. Uh, uh, die Rente, die Rente, as they say in Dutch. Die Rente is that's also a false cognate in English. It's um, yes. retirement. Yes. Or or being retired. Um, in Dutch, I don't know. Is it 
is it like your your rent? No, it's uh, okay. interest. In oh, interest. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Okay, um, peinlich. They spell it in in Dutch. Peinlich is spelled P P I J N L I S J K. And obviously, it's probably Dutch. pronounced a little more like peinlich. peinlich. Yeah, pein, peinlich, peinlich, maybe. But uh, peinlich, peinlich in German means uh, embarrassed or embarrassing. Yes, and in Dutch, it's similar uh, but different. Is it to be similar but different? Is it to be shocked? Uh, painful. Surprise. Painful. Painful. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Okay, interesting. Um, and there's more, but we'll leave it there. Those are some. Okay. I still have a couple more I wanted to also oh, talk yeah. about. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. So uh, we have, what does, can you translate the German word fast for me? Uh, almost. Yes. And in English, it is obviously fast means quick. And what's funny is Germans sometimes can throw the joke out there that Americans like fast food, meaning they like almost food. <laughs> that is a good like joke. It's not real food. Well, early yeah. joke of the pod there. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. Then we have hoot and hut. What's hoot? Hat. Yep, and hot is hot. And the interesting thing, though, is I believe this this English word comes from German, but the difference is German, it's hütte and not hoot. Um, and I think it must have just changed differently over time. You know what I wonder? Mm-hmm. I wonder if there are any false cognates that would get someone in trouble. You know what I mean? Like like they say, uh, and yeah. it's like, oh, I was just saying um, it's a lovely day. And it's like, what did you say about my uh, wife? <laughs> right yeah uh, I, I don't know i Maybe. mean i'm asking a question that I, I don't have the answer to so i know. i know i know in spanish and i'll have to ask my friend about this but in spanish there's a word that is um i think it's either scoop of ice cream or ice cream um or a flavor of ice cream that if you mispronounce it it's also the word for female genitalia hmm. Hmm. i'll have to figure out what those are again but okay. uh because um, yeah, I have a friend who was studying abroad in, in Spain. Well, I have a friend who was studying abroad in Spain, and she went to order, and the the guy at the ice cream parlor was like, "What do you want?" And she said it again. And he's like, "Do you mean blah blah blah?" But was and, he that and, shocked? Like, people, was he really that shocked though? I mean, it's like people were laughing around her. I guess. I mean, I'm surprised it's kind they of haven't. A funny mistake. I'm, I understand it's a funny mistake. I'm just surprised they haven't heard it before. Oh, I'm sure they have, but they probably laugh at it every time they hear it. Yeah, I maybe. Would imagine. Yeah. All right, Jared. The, another one we have is mist versus mist. Oh yeah, mist. That's is, a good one. Um, is like a is it uh, the less? It's essentially saying shit, but not swearing. Uh huh. Yeah, like it's, mist it's is not really poop. a swear word, but it's no, um, not at all. But it is saying essentially, yeah, like shit. Oh, mist. Right. It's like saying right. You, saying yeah, you can, exactly, but it's a little nicer. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, mist, mist is just like uh, when you go to Cedar Point and they have those fans that blow. Uh, water on you that's missed mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly exactly i thought that one was good yeah then we also have bank and bank oh i don't know i don't know bank i mean bank i know what a bank is bank is a uh, the german word also for a bench oh i don't know that that's, yeah that's news uh-huh. to me why do you go to the yep. bank get this right. prenup yeah. signed i thought you just exactly. want to go do a nice walk through the park <laughs> exactly Another one that's kind of interesting is the German word that that they have taken you get from English. Signs at, at banks, I don't think you do. Probably, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I've never had to sign a prenup. Probably with a lawyer. Uh, so, I don't know if you do right. that at banks. I would imagine so. This one is smoking versus smoking. This What's one smoking I don't understand. Okay. So I mean, I know what it is. Smoking is a jacket, isn't it? Like a blazer. It's more. Well, yeah, it's a sport coat or even a tuxedo. Okay. I think that's the same in French as well. Yep, it's also the same here in the Czech Republic. Why is that? What is that about? I think it's because back Smoking. in the day, people would have like fancy parties, and you'd probably wear a fancy jacket to the smoking room. Um, the smoking room. I like that. The smoking I'm not room. Sure. In my house. <laughs> Come to the smoking Let's see room. Here. My neighbors hate me. <laughs> Tuxedo. I'm trying to find it. And smoking is ein besonderes eleganter Anzug und Teil der Armen Garderobe für Herren. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was going to translate you oh, in it, real time. In British English, um, they call it a smoking dinner jacket. 
Put on your smoking so, dinner jacket. Exactly. So there Art you go. Perseus. <laughs> Relax. Okay, so smoking and smoking. Another good one is Brandt and Brandt. Brandt. What, what, what? Is that like a... I don't know. A Brandt is like a, like a fire. Oh, is it? Is it uh-huh. like burnt, do you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then brand obviously is like the, the, the German word would be Marke for brand, like <clears throat> a brand of clothing. Like, um, I don't know, Gucci is a brand, so on and so forth. Right. Then we have brave and My brav for sure. Brave and brave. I don't know what Plav is, although I do know what Brave is. It's a great movie by Pixar or, no, or by <laughs> Disney, one of those two. Brav means well behaved. Like they use it for small children. Oh. Like when St. Nicholas oh, comes right. on Christmas. Varst du brav? Were yes. Well behaved. I remember that. Mm hmm. Yeah, when well, we're in for Austria, talk they. About Campus, by the way. Oh, that's true. Coming, coming up. up. Yeah, the holiday coming up season is right around the corner. Dude, does it feel like. The, are you ready for. Um, Oh, your parents are coming to you. Uh, that makes it a little mm-hmm. bit easier. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because I I, I've, I don't travel a lot, but I've traveled a bit. And I've kind of been uh, stationary for a bit. And it's nice that my, uh, like, I feel like I've kind of gotten to a place where, like, all right, finally, I'm not spending money on stuff. It's like, and then Christmas comes along. I, I, it's not that I don't like Christmas. Mm-hmm. But I don't need it. I don't, I don't need it in my life. I would happily, I would happily fly back home. And then give up not getting any presents to not have to give any. Because it's more just the stress of having – I feel like there's a stress that I put on having to find the right present. That's fair. I agree with that. You're good at giving presents, though. You're, you're very thoughtful. I'm not thoughtful. I have no – I try. I try. I don't know. I actually still need to find some presents for my parents. But um, you can make yours check theme. That makes it a little bit easier. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. What do You, you sure. can get like a Macaulay Vivati cup or something. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, That's actually a great idea. Any other any other Christmas gift ideas, Jerry? I'm trying to think. Some sausage. Um, That's true. I do like the um, klobasa here. It's pretty good. I can, I'll, I'll get back to you. But uh, you could get a Macaulay Vivaldi cup. Right. Have That's you thought of idea. where you're going to take them? Yeah. Are we oh, going to yeah. do an On the Road Again featuring your parents? We could. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We could. I don't know. I do ask with you. I don't know how I feel about good. that. <laughs> right. It'd be a little, yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. I have two more German ones for you, though. Okay. Das Lokal. Do you know what that is? I saw this one, and I did not know that. I mean, Lokal means, like, local in, in English just means, like, uh, within your neighborhood, within your city. Right. It's convenient right. to you. Oh, that's mm-hmm. local. It's a local right. bar. I go to this place all the time. However, right. you can go to your local. How do you say local in German? Uh, örtlich. So you can go to your örtliche local, which would be your local local. Yep. Yep. Because a local, local, local is like a your local restaurant or a bar, isn't it? Yeah, usually more like a pub. But yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yep. Exactly. I and did not know one, that. Yeah. You yeah. know, we, people always say, "Are we meeting at this local?" I, right. I like, but then like, if they name it, you, 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 it's easy to just assume that they're saying like, "Oh, like local." This means spot, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. That's for sure. I mean, there's way more of these, but I didn't want to overwhelm but you I, or our listeners. I do like the fact that that I, like that's a, even its own category where it's like one that's a false cognate, but it still works, you know. Right. Where it's like that's it's true. not going to confuse you. It's like oh, I, I, it's you can still have a. Fully functioning conversation, not realize that they're talking about oh, definitely. bar rather than a. Uh, unless you're saying like you can go to a, a, a local. Could you say that or a local? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that might get a little confusing. Mm-hmm. Then. All right, yeah. Never mind. So the last one I have for you and Mama for our listeners is the German word eagle. Do you know what this is? Eagle. Uh, I mean, I know what an eagle is. It's a majestic bird. That's not the it's representing remember, we're America. With false friends and freedom. There's no false that's the friend American in the one. Eagle. What's what's the that's true. Eagle. What's the German word? Eagle. I G E L. Eagle. Eagle. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard that. It's before. a hedgehog. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. Eagle. Uh, that's uh-huh. not it's useful. Hedgehog. My uh, <laughs> as someone that's barely can consca- as someone that is on the cusp of fluent, I don't have space for a. Uh, Terms like head, hedgehog in my well, repertoire. Well, now, now you know. Now you know. Eagle. <laughs> the eagle is a hedgehog. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. I don't know. False false friends are are interesting, but unless it's one a serious one like gift, which means poison. Yes. Usually you'll be okay in German, that's for sure. Yes. And as I said before, there are a lot of references to the gift false friend. That's the classic. Oh yeah. Yep. I think that's the one that I used to even talk about the first day of German class in a lot of my classes. Yeah. So I was even a part of the the cliche. Yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. You're I mean, you're 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 a, you're a teacher, not a comedian. You don't have time to write. I, well, I, I try I try to I try to be a comedian and as that's, well. And bit. that's where you mess up. That's where you go wrong. <laughs> Stick to you're your not, you're job. not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. That's true. Do you have anything to add about false friends in German, Jared? Um no. No, I don't. I I I I I, I wish that I wish I could um you know cuz so these languages like German and English, German and Dutch have similar bases. Mm-hmm. And I wish I could just somehow be a fly in the wall when they go astray and they're like, "Oh, we're not going to gift is not going to mean present or gift is not going to mean poison whoever came first. It's going to mean this." And I, 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 I'm just always curious to know where that split happened and how that was decided. Because these words have obviously also been around for, you know, ever. These are not new words. Right. Right. And if any of our listeners happen to know about any of these splits, please email us at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. His- we would love to hear this. Is historical linguist a like a uh, uh, job or like a uh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. degree? I'm sure. Probably not. I mean, you just have a degree in linguistics, but you could definitely. I think most linguists, I I would imagine most linguists have to deal with a little bit of historical linguistics. And if you do, you could also like probably focus your dissertation on like blah, 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 century linguistics and blah, 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 place Roman, whatever. Right. Oh, I'm sure. Grad school people like to talk about and your 600 page essays that I'm still convinced no one reads. Not a lot of people do, and sadly, I've been told by faculty that um, a dissertation or a master's thesis isn't, you know, as credible as reading a journal article in in like a published journal. Which I understand, but it's also like, why are we writing these right, dissertations if right if if no one's going to be reading them? What um, did you? Yeah. Did you have to, by the way, I still want to do. A I did a thesis. School. I still want to do a grad school. Uh, well, let's save it for then, because I want to ask you what's okay. what it's on. But let's just save it for then, because even we I can. will even leave me on my toes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, because I still tell you do want to do a, a grad thesis. school episode. Right. Oh, we definitely should. I think it'd be helpful for a lot of people out there. Well, Jared, you know, some people ask me, although I I don't think I'm the coolest guy in the world. Some people ask me, Chad, how can I be cool? And you know what I tell them. I just tell them speak Deutsch. Do you have t- students that have ever asked you that before? I what? How to be cool? Yeah. Not not really. No. Mm. I've had yeah, I've had better. students. <laughs> I've had <laughs> probably teachers get asked. Some, just not. <laughs> yeah. I've had students ask me um, questions about girls. Questions about. Um, I had a student one time in one of my English classes ask me what the meaning of life was. What'd you tell them? Uh, I told speak him Deutsch. it's different. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, I told him speak Deutsch. No, I told him uh, it's different for everybody. I don't know. I can't tell you what the meaning. I think yeah, you have to figure that out. We all have to try to find exactly. Exactly. We gotta find out our own meaning. Yeah. yeah. And for our right, listeners Yoda. out there, the reason I why Yoda. I say <laughs> nice. The the reason why I say be cool speak Deutsch is because that is our song of the pod this week. And it is by a very famous German group um, called Die Prinzen or the Princes. Um, And it's a great song, kind of funny, and it talks about how English is kind of invading the German language. But before I go on, what do you think about it, Jared? Um, Yeah, it's, you know, goofy. Once again, you know how I feel about goofy songs. Like, it was enjoyable, but it's one of those songs, like, I'm not going to put it on my iPod. Right. Uh, But it was enjoyable. And um, I didn't know they were po- as popular as you say, say they were. I didn't. I didn't do that much research into them. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I only listened to it like partially once because this new album came out by Anderson Pack that I've uh, I, I, I've had for a couple of weeks. But I just played for the first time um, before we started recording. It actually timed it perfectly. I didn't even plan it, but I timed it perfectly where the the album ended right as we were about to start calling each other. But oh, um, nice. this album was so good. I was jamming out anyway um so um but yeah it's just about um i didn't understand like i I understood what he was talking about but i didn't understand what his 
point was until you just said that. Now it makes sense. I mm-hmm. didn't understand that he was getting at um, English invading the German language, but I understood what he was saying, where it's like, if you want to be like, stop saying this, stop saying that, but say this. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was happening. When was this song? Did you know when this song came up? I, I could have looked this up myself, I guess. I'm not sure. Because I, I wonder... S- I wonder how this came when this song came out in relation to social media. You know, like are they cuz I can imagine now especially English invading um Germany or any European or I guess any really d- developed country enough to have uh smartphones, which is I mean just about any country. I'm sure English has really s- Go ahead. 10 10 years ago. Okay, early, but still there is still social media. That's early. I mean, Twitter started in two thousand six. Facebook was right. two thousand four or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can imagine that. How do you feel about um, the proliferation of? Uh, do you think um, there's a point to the song? I mean, I think the point to the song is. I mean, there's a point, but how do you do? You agree with the point? Yeah, I think it's as as someone who loves German, it um. It makes me a little sad. Like sometimes it's nice because I can get away with using English and German if I don't know words. Right. But a lot of other times it's like um, I'm trying to think of specific examples. But there there are times when Germans now will start to use English words in German, even though they had a German word that would essentially oh, but just, do the same thing. Oh yeah. So and that's a that whole bothers me a little realm of yeah. false co- cognates. Right. Where it's like we're adopting this as our um, as our own. So, like for example, computer mm-hmm. is is computer not actually the word for computer, and um, isn't it like ordinateur no, or something like? Oh, that might be French. I, I've, al- I've I've always heard comp- com- ordinateur might be French. <laughs> yeah, um, I wonder if computer is the word for. But uh, yeah, no. I, I, for for example, I've heard people now say stereo system, and they have a German word uh, die stereo Anlage. Okay. And people, I've heard Germ- some Germans use system instead of Anlage, for example. Um, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it just shows that language changes and evolves. Uh, but at the same time, it makes me a little sad because it's like we're losing German words because they're, you know, replacing them with English words. Well, the, and this is this is how languages become Latin. You know, obviously it takes thousands and thousands of years, but I think this is... Not like this. This is sort of the process of of of, of obsoleting a language because another language uh, takes over society yeah. in a way that I mean, especially you know, hundreds or fifth hundreds, tens of years ago, you could never have imagined a language could you know English could proliferate right. society even like even more than it already had. Right. Yeah, and like a lot of a lot of like German different like commercials and service points and things they have um all sorts of english words now they'll call them service points um you know tickets instead of farkarta or karta oh yeah um and i'm trying to think there was like a they had like a deutsche bahn had this weird like i forget what the name of it was now but it was something like kiss and go or something like that it was basically where people would um (laughs) say goodbye to each other like on the pl- train platform, uh, they call it a kiss and go, or or it's kiss and something. I thought. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find it right now, really quick. Um, let's see here. Kiss and ride, kiss and ride. Um, kiss and ride zone. Oh yeah, I see it. Uh huh. Yeah. Kiss that's- and ride. There you go. That seems like an odd. Sounds a little, a little too specific, a little di- right? That's like you're hugging someone. It's like, hey, get out of here, right? I know, I know. They're probably not that literal with it. Kiss and ride, yeah, kiss and ride, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, um, yeah. But you know, it, it is what it is. That's where you where you say goodbye to your your partners. But I'm yeah. not a big uh, kisser. I also realized um, I've, I've been realizing. I'm not a huge fan of uh, holding hands. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, uh, how do you feel about holding hands? It's all right. I mean, it depends on the person. Um, seems you know, like, like seems pointless to me sometimes. 
I don't know. I think sometimes it's nice. Maybe that just know. means it's not the right person. <laughs> I think that's uh, maybe that's it. I don't know. This is, Could be. I, I don't know. I, it doesn't bother me. That's for yeah. sure. Okay. All right. But uh, but yeah, yeah. So check out our uh, song of the pod this week. It's definitely a little goofy, but I figured it would be appropriate with the topic. Um, be cool. Speak Deutsch by Die Prinzen. They have a lot of really great music. It's not for Jared because most of it's acapella, but for all oh, the is it all acapella? Out there, a lot of it is. I thought yeah. they had inter- instruments with them. They do in that song. Oh, okay. But a lot of their other ones are acapella. What is going on? I'm learning so much about you. I didn't realize you were this deep into the acapella game. Well, I'm more just deep into this. I like this German group. It wouldn't okay. matter if it was acapella or not. It was more just fair the, enough. Yeah, and you know, I like I like learning. Learning languages through music, and Die Prinzen usually have some pretty funny songs and good vocabulary words to learn. So, yeah. Speaking of vocabulary words, I would like to share with you a uh, new Czech word of the pod today. And I believe, I could be wrong, but I think this comes from German, actually. And the word is Tashka. Do you have any guesses what Tashka might be? Cup. Not cup. Plate. If you watched a, if, I was trying if to, I thought watched, maybe Tassa. What's Tassa? If you watched, if you watched a Czech version of um, Lola Rent, they would be saying Tashka. Hurry? Die Tasha. I don't know. Tasha. 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 Table? It's a bag. Bag. Oh, Tasha. Gotcha. It's a bag. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Did you not watch Lola Rent when we were in college? I, I did. I've watched it like 1,800,000 times. <laughs> okay. I don't remember anything about I mean, not, it's just it's been a, a, a while. What about Natasha? Is that why she, why she was running? Yeah, because she, the bag had the well, money in it. Okay. And he loses the bag, right? Dude, that, that's this a, comes from German. I have that movie on DVD probably with me here. Like, I That nice. movie is just like the quintessential German mm-hmm. movie. And well, I don't, If you're a German student and you haven't watched Lola Rent, you need to give your German teacher. Clearly, it hasn't stuck with me that well. I, all I remember I is not. that they're the people walking with the glass. Remember that? Yep. Uh huh. Um, I should watch it again. We should do a, a movie review of Lolo Rent. <laughs> <laughs> we could. We definitely. It's a crazy movie. I tried to watch it with my dad, and my dad speaks German. You know that, but the listeners probably don't. And uh, and he was just like, "What is this?" <laughs> so we only got. Why, why did it become such it. a hit? I don't know. That's a good question. Like, because it became an international hit. It wasn't just a, right. like, and it became the go-to, the go-to teaching German movie. movie. Yeah. Because I've watched it in just about every German class I've been in. <laughs> right. Same here. Same here. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a, just because it's a crazy movie. I don't know. Um, There's some big time actors in it. Yeah, I'm not sure though. But she but wasn't yeah. big time at that time. I feel like she was big time after that. That, that well, because of that movie. Right, 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 right. But yeah, um, but yeah. So Tashka, and and the reason why I picked this word this week is I was grocery shopping, and uh, I was asked if I wanted to buy a bag or not. And so it's a good word to know if you go grocery Nouvete shopping. Anglitsky. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Tashka is the Czech word for bag. I found out. Um, the Czech slang word for bottle is flashka, kind of like flasha. Oh, why so, is it slang? It's not even that short. What's the full because, word? Because they have a kova? no, 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 no. They have a different Czech word for it. Okay. I think people in my region say flashka instead of the other Czech word for it. Is there? Um, mm-hmm. Would it be worth doing an episode about the different dialects within the Czech Republic? Is there? Is can you? Do you notice differences between? I don't. I don't know if I know. I'd have to do a lot of research. Okay. It'd be so interesting. You, you don't like notice difference between Prague and uh, Kumatov or whatever. Not really. Okay. And they talk so fast. It would. Right. It would be hard That's for me point. to tell. I think I That's keep expecting sure. you to be way more advanced than you are. I've never seen you in a place of not knowing a language. You've always been the right. language expert. I well, like that's because I've, I've been in Lost. Germany and Austria. <laughs> yeah, those are those are definitely some words to describe it. I've been lost more than once. I went to get Chinese last week, and uh, realized you're in the Czech Republic. Well, yes. <laughs> well, no. I ordered the food and it was fine. I'm sure my pronunciation was horrible, but I ordered um, Szechuan chicken, which was delicious. Um, but she was asking me if I. I think she was asking me if I wanted it spicy or not spicy. And I told her in Czech, I said, uh, nerozumim, which means I don't understand. And she angrily repeated it. 
Uh, I didn't ask her that, but she angrily repeated it. And I still like looked at her and gave her a blank stare. And then she goes, chili. And I was like, oh, you must mean like spicy. Okay. And I well, was what's, like, yeah. What's, what's with the attitude? She, yeah, she was angry. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was at the end of the day. Maybe she had a long day. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in her life, but uh, she was not happy. I didn't know what she was saying. <laughs> okay. But it is what it is, you know. Um, All right, people well, aren't always patient with foreigners. Tashka, or excuse me, yeah, Tashka, you said is bag, mm-hmm. is bag. Uh huh. Exactly. Okay. All right. So I have a couple German jokes for you, Jared. Oh man. My first one is: What is a? This is too easy. You'll probably be able to guess it. What is a German's favorite number? Nine. Good job. Yep. I don't know why it's nine. Is this because they like to say no? I just for some reason I figured it'd be nine. I don't even know where, like the like get that joke. I just had a right. feeling it would be nine. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think that's, that's nine. Just because yeah. they, just because that stereotype. They like of, to say uh, no. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you, so Jared, what? Do you, go ahead. Sorry. You feel very strongly uh, against that stereotype of of German sounding uh, not nice. Hmm. I would say there are some German dialects or areas where. People aren't as warm it's, and friendly. It's not that German doesn't sound nice. It's just that German people tend to not be nice people. I, I wouldn't say that. We can agree <laughs> or disagree on that. The language but, uh, is beautiful if spoken by, uh, uh, if you can find a, a non-angry German. I really like the way Austrian German sounds. And a lot of Germans have admitted to me that they think it sounds really nice. Austrian German? Yeah, I mean they really don't have anything against Austria, do they? For the most part, it's not like a Michigan Ohio thing, is it? Uh, I think there's a little bit a little bit of big brother, little brother with Germany and Austria. Whoa. I would. Say. I mean, I would not use those terms. Let me let me just be clear. I would not call Austria a little brother. I mean, I wouldn't either. Although, but okay, I mean, you just did. But no. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I'm just saying that's kind of how they how I think they're. There's still a little bit of tension, I would say. Okay. A little bit. They're just more uh, civil about it than we are in Michigan right. and Ohio. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Fuck your freeway. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, Jared. So I got another one for you. Okay. What do you call German music in Spanish? Um, orders. Espanoling. Mm. I see what you did there. (laughs) Right? And the last one, sadly, this isn't really a question and answer one, but I've always thought this was funny. No matter how kind you are, German children are kinder. Oh. Wow, these are all very pro-German jokes. Mm -hmm. Well, most of the German jokes that aren't pro-German either have to do with Nazis or Holocaust. or Exactly. (laughs) Not not where I was trying to take our uh, (laughs) jokes of the podcast this week. You don't have a bunch of Holocaust (laughs) jokes to end the show? (laughs) Believe it or not, uh, not not really. That's for sure. Go out on a bunch of uh, a couple of Holocaust jokes to... uh, Take it to, to the, lighten the mood. Yeah, take to your family on Thanksgiving. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, it has uh, come to that time where I would like to leave our listeners with a quote. And this is from, Jared, do you know who um, Konrad Adenauer who was? By chance? No. You didn't hear me? Who that? <laughs> he, uh, Actually, he don't was, know. I, don't, I do not know who that is. So he was a really, really important um, German statesman who was the first, um, or yeah, who was the first chancellor of West Germany from, I believe, like 1949. Um, oh, how long was he in office? Um, I think four or five years, somewhere around there. But um, so he's a very famous German politician. And uh, this quote from him is Oh, is there a all- song about him? Probably. I feel like I've heard a song so. about that guy. Maybe. Um, but yeah, the quote is, we all live under the same sky, but we don't all have the same horizon. Oh. I thought this kind of fit Quirky. with our theme of uh, similar words, but completely different meanings or different horizons. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had more examples of using like a, a false cognate and, you know, insulting someone unbeknownst. Well, one that one that it's not German, but it's Spanish. It's not really insulting someone, but um, if you say embarazado, uh, it sounds like embarrassed, but it actually means pregnant. Ah. Oh. So I had a friend who studied abroad in Spain, and I guess she like tripped on the bus or something, and she meant to say Yo. like I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. 
But she said, I'm so pregnant. And then everyone like had a reaction. Like, oh, my God. Are you, are you okay? okay? Like, right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the almost the exact opposite reaction she wants. She wants no one to pay attention to her. Instead, exactly. everyone's like, oh, God, come to the her baby, aid. Is the baby all right? Yeah. <laughs> call 911. Oh, no. Excuse me. Call 112. Yeah, I wonder if that's the same in everywhere in the EU. Because it is also here. It's 112 in the Czech Republic as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that uh, what it is in Germany? Is. I don't remember. I, th- I think so. Okay. I think so. But, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, a, so by yeah. the way, you have an iPhone as well. This is a, a, mm-hmm. a quick tangent. I've, I've almost... Uh, more, of, uh, more recently have been um, hitting the emergency call button, th- like mm-hmm. pocket dialing emergency call. And only noticing when that loud alarm like counts down that I'm about to call. Oh, jeez. Okay. That's been happening frequently, maybe at least twice a week. I don't know what's going on, but I always get nervous that the cops are going to show up. I've I've never done that before. I hadn't either until recently. I don't know what's happening. Getting that new phone and that update, man. I don't know. Yeah. Dangerous. It's too big. Very dangerous. Well, I hope that uh, all of our listeners out there, and I think it's safe to say you have also learned – some new false friends today, Jared from German to English. Um, so send us any of your favorite false friends in any languages. Um, either slide into our DMs on Twitter, Untranslatable1. Uh, you can also message us on Instagram at Untranslatable Podcast or shoot us an email, Untranslatable Podcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and hear about any of your travel stories, untranslatables, false friends, or just tell, you, tell us how you're doing. We'd, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So we would like to thank you all for your support. It really means a lot. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, talking to you next time.